49 years to the day that man landed on the moon, NASA had an update on how it will get to the sun. The space agency is putting the final touches on its Parker Solar Probe. It will launch in just over two weeks to try and touch a boiling ball of gas. We are now on at the finish line and ready to launch our mission, um, join all the other wonderful missions that NASA has. Um, looking at the sun, we're going to be providing that last piece of the puzzle. It travels faster than you can imagine, faster than any other man-made object. At our closest approach, we will be traveling at 430,000 miles an hour, or about 118 miles a second. And the probe will use the planet Venus and its gravity to help direct its path straight into the layer surrounding the sun, the corona. The goal? To learn more about the charged particles called solar wind that come from the sun and then travel the whole solar system. But also to figure out why the sun's atmosphere is so much hotter than its surface. All while these sophisticated heat shields protect the craft from that intense heat. In a relatively short time, you know, we've come to understand so much more for many scientists, it can be hard to identify only one thing to be excited about when it comes to the Parker probe. For me, the thrill of understanding something that's been a puzzle for so long, that, that's what is the most interesting thing. I mean, there are all these technical uh, developments that were necessary to do that. And each one on their own, they're quite amazing. Like he says what many don't realize is every bit of information Parker will send back will help us on Earth. Solar events that send a lot of charged particles our way can have significant uh, effects on our power grids and can bring a, a power grid down, can have significant effects on our communications, can wipe out communications for a long time. So it's important that we understand this. Key information as we try to unlock the mysteries of our star on the probe's seven-year journey to explore the sun. Salima Shivji, CBC News, Toronto. Now, if someone with a keen interest in all of this is our science and technology reporter, Nicole Mortolaro. She's also an amateur astronomer. So, Nicole, first off, we're talking about a seven-year mission here. Explain how that works, because I'm wondering, does the probe arrive at the sun and then just smash into it, or does it stick around for a while? Well, it will be arriving in November, and it will be orbiting 24 times, taking it out beyond Venus and back in and close around the sun. But it's not actually touching the sun. So um, it's in its outer corona, is what it's called, the outer atmosphere. And so it's kind of like putting your hand, the difference between putting your hand in a pot of boiling water or in an oven. You're not touching those particles in that way. And that's the same thing with the Parker Solar Probe. Okay, still pretty, uh, pretty hot nonetheless, I surmise. So uh, uh, now I understand you have a, not just a personal interest in this, but a personal connection to the story? Yeah, for uh, seven weeks, NASA opened up um, a, a, a contest, uh, not a contest, but uh, they asked the public to submit their names that would be put on a microchip that will be on the spacecraft. So it's kind of neat to think that eventually when the spacecraft breaks up, our names will become part of the sun's corona. <laughs> does, it, does it kind of make you feel like you're, you're along for the ride? Yeah, anyway? yeah, why not? Okay, uh, Nicole, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you.